Hello everyone, this is Jewel from Seed Spores and Spirits. Today we're going to get a frost or freeze actually tonight in Maryland Zone 6B. And I'm about, uh, I'm less than a month, I'm about three weeks off right now from my last freeze date. So um, I've got to make some plans as to what I'm going to do. I already have plans, I've already known, I always have a game plan for what I'll do if and when there's a freeze or a frost. Um, but I wanted to share that here with you. So the first thing let's talk about is what doesn't need any help? What does not need to be covered or anything like that? All of your perennial herbs that you already have in the ground, your leafy greens for the most part don't need any help. Uh, I've got mustard greens and uh, uh, rainbow chard and I've got kale, uh, I've got lettuces, I've got spinach. Um, all of those for the most part, they're gonna be totally fine. Now again, it's going down to like 34, maybe 32 at best or worst, I guess. Um, if this wasn't, you know, the twenties or the teens, we're talking, this is a whole different conversation, but if it's just a light freeze, you know, frost or whatever, um, these things should be okay. Excuse me. Um, but, um, so those, all those things will be fine. The things that you do want covered though, and if you're not quite sure, maybe you've just transplanted some spinach or just transplanted some lettuce. You know, th that can be a little bit of a period of adjustment. So even though technically your lettuce should be fine, just for, you know, good, you know, peace of mind or whatever, you can go ahead and cover them. And I would probably use something like this. This is called Harvest Guard. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of products like this on the market. This one here is $15.99 and it's about five feet long by 25 feet. I'm sorry, five feet wide by 25 feet long. I swear that in years past, cause I get these every year. Um, this, this one is from last year. I just never used it. I swear they used to, it used to have a thing on here that says something like it, it can protect for up to 10 degrees. So if it's 32 degrees, then it'll make it seem, you know, seem like it's 42 degrees uh, to the plants. But um, it doesn't say that anymore. I don't know if they got sued or what. <laughs> Somebody might have called them out on that one. But I do know that it protects for sure. And you can do it as a single layer or you can double it. I usually almost always double it uh, unless I'm short, you know, and, and I need to cut it and put some in another bed. But this should take care on a single layer. This will take care of four, four by eight beds. So it's, I think it's good money to go ahead and buy that when you don't need it. Um, the other way you can use it though, since it, it is, it's 16 bucks. So, and let's say you buy it and you don't need to use it for, it, you know, you don't need, have any frost or freeze or whatever. You can also use this as um, kind of a netting. Uh, I've used it two ways. One, in the middle of the summer, I've used it as a shade cloth for lettuce. And I've also used it as kind of a netting to keep uh, insects away from some of your crops. So you just basically, you can use anything you want. Um, I have these, I don't even know what you call them, but they're little circles, half circles, more than half circles. And you just put these straight down into the ground. I usually do them about every two and a half feet to every three feet. And then you lay the fabric across and then you just, you know, hook it with a clothespin or something like that. And, um, you know, you're straight. So, um, and then even on top of that, if you want even more protection, let's say you double it up and all that, and you still want more protection because maybe it's going to be a little bit cold, maybe it's going to be 30 degrees, you can still put a blanket on top of that. Now you might not have a blanket to sleep that night with, but hey, your 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 produce is going to be uh, covered and they're happy. And that's what counts. So another thing that you can use, if you do have something that you planted that's still small and that's coming up, they have these things, they're called grow caps. Again, there's probably something else similar. It's like a clo cloche, cloche? I think it's cloche is how you pronounce it. Um, but I've got these from Amazon and it comes in like a pack of 25 maybe. And you can either do a single or you can do a double, triple it up, however much protection that you wanna give something. And these really do come in handy. I'll put these on the ground to warm the soil for um, sometimes like if I'm gonna be seeding something that wants a little bit higher of a temperature. I did a temp check, um, it was 55 degrees yesterday. So generally a lot of the warmer stuff, it wants a temperature of at least 60 degrees of, you know, in your bed. So maybe starting something off under this kind of cover is great. And then once it does reach 60 degrees, you can just take it off and let them roll. So, um, so it's a couple of different ways that you can use these things. So even though there's a cost to them, you can use them in a couple of different ways. So um, what else? 
why? Why do I use this? Why do I even plant early and worry about this stuff? Why don't I just wait until after my last frost date, which is what most Americans do, right? It's because I wanna get the most bang for my buck out of my garden. Um, I've never done an exact comparison of this is how much I spent on my garden and then this is how much I spend each week on vegetables. No, haven't done that. Um, I try to be as smart as possible when it comes to my garden, but in terms of buying your compost, buying your seeds, buying shade cloth and you know protective cloth and um, tomato cages and you know trellises like the one behind me, all that stuff you know it adds up. And over time, obviously, it works its way. You know, it works itself out. But you just want to make sure that you're spending your money wisely. And the best way for me to do that is to extend the growing season, preferably on the front side and the back side. But I know for sure on the front side, I want to do that because I'm super excited to get out, get my hands on the dirt when it's starting to get nice out like this. Um, I just I can't wait to garden. Now on the other side, when it comes time for you know us to close up the gardens for the fall and winter, I'm like done. I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to think about no tomatoes. I don't want to worry about watering. I, I'm just done. Like I just want to clean up as little as I can and get the hell out of Dodge. So but so starting early for me is really where I can get more value. And if I can get two to three more weeks worth of produce from my garden out it definitely, I mean, it's, it's definitely gonna save a couple hundred dollars, you know, by doing that. So, let me think of anything else. I think that's it. Why don't you come with me to my other garden and I'm gonna show you a little surprise of what I'm growing over there and how I'm gonna protect it tonight. All right, before I get into my surprise, I just wanna show you a few things that I've got coming up. So these are snow peas that are looking really good. I don't need to, um, cover those at all tonight. I think they should be fine. That's some transplanted spinach. I might want to um, cover those. The only reason why is they were transplanted not that long ago and um, I don't know some of the leaves are a little yellow and I don't think it's for lack of nitrogen. Could be wrong but I did add some fish emulsion to it. Um, here's some romaine lettuce here. Broccoli here. The broccoli is for sure going to be fine. And I've got some carrots that are coming up. They should be totally fine. And they're like barely up. They should be totally fine. But if I go ahead and cover it, I'm gonna cover the whole bed with that landscape fabric that I just showed you. Here's just a little bed. There's some parsley that I had to trans, uh, that I um, I split it in half from my other garden. And then uh, a little bit of herbs. There's some thyme there. A couple of things of, uh, little teeny things of green onion that they'll grow in no time. Some mustard greens and uh, just a little bit of kale and some chard. So I'm gonna be growing a lot more of that. I got a lot of stuff seeded. I've got potatoes back there. Ooh, yes, potatoes is something that I'm definitely gonna have to cover. Um, you can see it got a little bit cold, uh, about the same temperature actually, about 34 degrees, maybe four or five days ago. And that happens. You see some of the leaves are fine and then some of them got damaged. Now, if you notice, <laughs> these leaves are really, really big. And it's because those um, leaves weren't there. I mean, those leaves weren't there. The potatoes were from last season. They actually overwintered. I can't, I've never even heard of that. I didn't know that was possible. Um, I went to go use the same bed that I did last year, and uh, I went to go, you know, plant some new slips. And I was like, holy moly! Like this is. I thought it was weeds at first. I'm like, nope. These are new slips. So they're new. Um, leaves and then here's some new ones Th those are red normal ones so i planted those on 4 1 today is 4 21 so 20 days ago and uh so i'm gonna cover those with some straw and then i'm gonna put a blanket over them tonight but um yeah things are growing good i've got some mint here all right i've got some lettuces here but oh what what is that is that a tomato plant oh my word all right so let me come over here I have three tomato plants in. This is kind of an experiment. I've never had them in so early. I did this, uh, a similar thing last year, but um, this year I did it different and I'll, I'll explain. First of all, this is a wild cherry. All three of these are wild cherry. They're, they're uh, cherry tomatoes. They've been in since 4-1. Today is 4-21. So they've been in for 21 days, almost three weeks right now. And, uh, and they're looking good. They're looking healthy. And if you notice though 
there are some flowers already trying to start. The plant is definitely confused. It's not sure if it's spring, or summer, if it's winter. So it definitely hasn't grown quite as much as a normal, like let's say in the summer. But, um, you know, it's, it's growing. So I'm, I just went ahead and pinched off these flowers because I don't want it to, it's not ready at all yet, you know, for it to start putting out fruit. I mean, I'm like, honey bun, you're like barely two feet tall. So, so just keep pinching those off. Okay, now before I start getting hate mail and all that, this was not at all my idea whatsoever. This is Gary Polarczyk's idea from the Rusted Garden. Um, he and I have become friends, I say fr friendly, I should say, um, probably about a year or more ago um, when I was still doing mushrooms. He had reached out or, um, or I had reached out, I, f I forget exactly how it happened. I think he reached out to me on Instagram and we were gonna do something collaborative um, with the Rusted Garden and Funky Fungi and it just it never happened. But um, anyhow, so this was his idea on using these double totes that are clear, you know, so that it could make, make like kind of a greenhouse during the day even for these tomatoes. Now, in fairness to me, I did something very similar the last two years, but I used trash cans. They were like opaque gray trash cans. And because they were opaque, I couldn't keep them on during the daytime. They, they need sunlight. So um, I took them off during the daytime, like in the morning, and I only put it back on at night. Or if it was gonna be a really bad weather day, I just kept it on. But they only got that nighttime protection. And so, um, you know, it just, uh, they didn't do so hot. So I'm curious to see if these do any better. Um, I have a feeling they will. They already look kind of healthier to me. Um, but at the same time, I only put mine out in the garden about two weeks before my last frost date last year. So they're only around two weeks before they should have been. Whereas these, like I said, I think they were out, uh, I, I planted these what will be six weeks before the last frost date. So I will be so happy if I'm able to get tomatoes six weeks early. I mean, it, it will just make my day. And if, um, and if that happens, thank you so much, Gary, like, cause you're freaking a genius. Um, I was kind of halfway there, but I didn't quite make it to the finish line. And now this makes sense the way that he decided to try it out this year. Also, the only way I was able to do this is because my plants were big enough. My friend, Sherry, uh, she's overzealous like me and she started seed starting in like January. So these tomatoes were like, I mean, they couldn't wait to get planted by the time April 1st came around, which is when I planted this. So, um, you know, she just happened to have some extra plants that were already the right size. And uh, so I put them in the ground. But if it wasn't for that, if they were just regular sized plants, if I had plant if I had seeded them on time and all that, I don't know that I would have um, chanced it. Um, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how these do. And I'll see if it's something that I would do regularly. So tonight, so every night up until this point, I've only put two totes down there because it is gonna get to freezing. I'm gonna do the two totes plus a blanket on top of that. And uh, that's about all I can do without sitting out here with a hair dryer. So um, if, if it doesn't work or you know, there's a lot of damage to the plants, I will, uh, I'll check back with you. It's after tomorrow. But um, starting tomorrow, I've looked out for 10 days from now, like on the weather channel. And for the next 10 days after tomorrow, we're in the mid 40s at night to mid 50s. And so to me, with no, no other chance of coldness like that. And so I'm gonna plant. I'm gonna start planting uh, this week in a couple of days. And don't call me, don't email, don't write, don't text. Uh, because I'm gonna be planting. <laughs> so I'll try to see if I can do some videos, if there's anything fun, you know, I can show you out of uh, transplanting and seeding. But, um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm just gonna chance it. That's gonna take me, so 10 days from now will take me about maybe five days before my last frost date actually comes. Um, and so I feel comfortable with chancing it for five days. You know, we'll see. But uh, I, I, feel, I feel good about that. But um, all right, well, if you have any questions for me, leave it in the comments. I'm sorry, sometimes after a certain number of comments, I kind of get caught up because I'm on to another video. But um, yeah, anything that you saw today, like the shade cloth and those cloches, cloch, cloches, um, stuff like that, they're all on my kit page. Um, it's kit.co slash spores spirits. All right, spores, so <laughs> seeds, spores, and spirits. Oh my goodness, it's gonna take me a minute to get used to this new name. 
So, but it's also listed below underneath the video. I've got a link to that and all those, um, all those items are there. So take care and happy gardening.